Hello, in this video I will be making a mini game, a progress bar where you hold a key and it increases to start an event, something like in Dead by Daylight. Here is an example. This is applicable to many scenarios. We are going up to this locked door. Interact once, and we are welcomed by the mini game. We have to hold a key. You can set any. Once it's complete, the connected events play out. We can start with creating the progress bar widget. Right click and at the bottom, there is the widget blueprint. Name it. Open up the widget and add a progress bar. Anchor it to the bottom, and play around with size, position, and alignment. Once that is done, name the progress bar to something you remember and tick the variable box. Remember to compile and save. You can then create a blueprint inside of the content browser. This is going to be an actor component. This will be added to actors that have the held progress bar feature. Open it up and in here, on begin play. You want to create the widget and promote it to a variable so we can reference this throughout the code. You then want to add that referenced widget to the viewport. Create a custom event, you can do this shortcut to get a custom event faster. Call it check key hold. This event checks the key you are currently pressing for an amount of time and updates the progress bar accordingly. Get player controller and from the return value, get input key time down. The key can be promoted to a variable and you can change it to whatever you want. I called it key pressed. Now you also want to promote the float return value into a variable called holding time. This node will return the value of how long you held the key. We now want to update our progress bar. To do this, get our referenced widget variable and do get held bar, the progress bar you created. Now you have access to the set percent node. The value is calculated by doing holding time divided by another variable. Create a float variable called max held time. This is how long the key input needs to be held for. This is the value for the percent. We now want to do a branch. The condition is if the holding time is greater than or equals to the max held time. If it's true, then it is complete. Next you want to get the widget and remove it from the player. Now, we want to make it call an event, once we are done. To do this, we can create an event dispatcher. This is at the bottom left. You can name it on completed. Once you drop it, it has a few options. We can call it, bind it, or unbind it. For this, we want to call the event, meaning do the event. We will bind the event in the actor you add this component. You will now destroy this actor component. We won't be needing it. That is the functionality mostly done. Now our variables like key pressed needs to be instanced editable and exposed on spawn so we can change the value on the node itself once we add it. Same with the max hold time. You can also add in default values so you don't always have to change it differently for all the actors. We then want to set timer by function name. Once we add this, we want to loop the check hold event constantly. Give the function name, the time can be 0.12 and tick looping to true. Oh and don't forget to clear timer by function name before destroying the component, adding on its function name correctly. Let's do two test examples, first go to your player character. In here, I will press a random number to start the mini game. We can use an add AC held node. Let's put the key pressed as space bar, and we want to hold this progress bar for 4 seconds. After this, we can now drag from the return value and do a assign on complete. This means it will automatically create a custom event to go with it. This custom event can be called anything. For this first example, I just wanted to print a string. Let's do our first test. Press the number then play mini game. Our event seems to not play. Let's go back to the actor component. It seems I forgot to clamp the values. We can do it after the input time down. The max clamp is our max held time. As you can see we also moved while we were playing the puzzle, we could disable the movement and re-enable once completed or below after the true branch, but I will be changing my key press to the letter F. Another problem was from a player's point of view, a new player won't know what key to press so it's best to add in a text to help the player. Add a text, and name is press text, and make sure the variables ticked on. Compile and save so you can use this variable too. 
Now you can go to the actor component and get the widget. Get your text, and set text. The value will be the format text. Right press and add weird looking brackets X and close it to create an input. The X is the key press then get key display name. Since it says none, I think it gets the key pressed value a bit late. Put the same exact code, in your timer event, check key hold. In Unreal Engine 5, you can ignore this bug, anyway, it works. The code works, but let's test this with a door. This segment is long because I do show how I recreate the door. Create a blueprint actor for the door. This door has a mesh and select the door one. It will also need a box collision to fill up the door. The details panel has some green buttons, press the begin overlap, on component begin overlap, you want to check if that other actor is equals to the get player character. Do a branch in its similar code to before, just add the component. Set up a key pressed and max time held. Assign the event, and the event is on complete E or something. Now I am not going to teach you how to make a door in detail, so I will rush through this. Add a timeline, then you want to get a mesh, and set relative rotation. You want to then split the rotator into floats so you can change the Z lerp the Z put A is 0, B is 45 or 90. In the timeline, add a float timeline. Set the timeline duration to 1 second. Key point starts at 0 and 0. The next point is at time 1 or however long your point is and then the value is at 1, because a lerp goes from 0 to 1. After any adjustments connect the alpha to the lerp alpha. Now once we complete it, we can just drag our animation and play from start, we can also get the box component and destroy that component. We don't want to overlap with door again now since it is opened or else it might create another held component. Now compile and save. We are complete with this. Here is my test again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this content. If you have any problems, comment below or join the discord. Consider subscribing and see you next time.